My name is Simon Rapley. I'm going to give an update on redwood genetics in New Zealand. Uh, there are now more than 10,000 hectares of redwood forest in New Zealand, and we know from tree sales from the nurseries that uh, there are more and more trees going into the ground each year. Uh, people are interested in redwood because it's a high value timber. There, uh, redwood has other traits such as the ability to control erosion better than almost any other tree on steep hill country. And redwood is very well suited to uneven aged management. We also have government policy now encouraging greater diversity in the forestry sector. And um, redwood is recognised as a, a viable commercial forestry crop in New Zealand. Um, I am a registered forester with New Zealand Institute of Forestry. I have been growing redwood for a living since 2006. And as a hobbyist, um, just looking at the photograph there, I uh, started working with redwood uh, back in 1999 on some family land. Uh, my current role is the managing director of the New Zealand Redwood Company. Interesting for us to look at the situation in California, where uh, which is the natural range of redwood. Foresters there have been considering redwood silviculture for a lot longer than uh, than what we have here, and have, uh, have have come up with clear strategies. And also for New Zealand foresters and researchers, there are some important differences with redwood silviculture than um, than most of what we do here in New Zealand. And firstly, redwood cutovers don't require replanting. Uh, redwood stumps coppice sometime after harvest. There's a small percentage that don't, but most of them do. And the next crop grows very rapidly off an established root system. And uh, the photograph on the right shows a cluster of stump sprouts that would be 50 to 60 years old, or 50 to 60 years following harvest. Inside that little ring of sprouts will be an old uh, rotting stump from the original old growth tree. And the, um, the, the, the commercial cut in California is based on these regenerating sprouts now. There's virtually no old growth harvest anymore. The Californian foresters uh, do plant redwood, of course. Um, redwood occurs in mixes with various other trees and following harvest, they like to put all of the land back into redwood on account of its high value and um, ease, of, uh, ease of management. Traditionally, they've used seedlings for this interplanting, uh, but for a number of reasons, including unreliable cone production, and, um, and low germination of the seed. There's been a shift to clonal propagation. Um, the last good seed crop was 2009, following wildfires, and the foresters are hoping that there'll be some good uh, seed production next year, following the fires that uh, they have in California at the moment. Redwood flowers in the winter, and although California may get us a similar rainfall to New Zealand, None of it falls in the summer, it all falls in the winter. So the winters are cold and wet and just not good conditions for pollination of, um, of the flowers. Uh, the, another reason that's driven the shift to clonal propagation is that redwood is a, one of the few conifers that can, uh, where, where mature trees can be cloned. And of course, that gives the opportunity for rapid deployment of improved genetics. Um, breeding programs aren't necessary where desirable parents are crossed and, and, and seed with its inherent variability is produced. Um, mature trees with the desirable traits are identified in the forest and they are cloned and tissue culture labs can literally produce um, hundreds of, of plants in a relatively short period of time. 
The California Growers have recently formed a tree improvement co-op. Uh, there are 20 members and that is pretty much all of the redwood growers in California. Uh, they have engaged the services of Dr. Keith J. Wakrama. And if that name is for, seems familiar to you, maybe it is. Uh, Keith was with the NZFRI for a while. Uh, the co-op has uh, almost 200 genotypes under evaluation and all of its members are actively bringing material into it for evaluation. Uh, it is worth mentioning at this point that they do have different uh, selection criteria to New Zealand. Um, to a Californian redwood forester, all redwood is good redwood in terms of timber quality, and they have no interest in, in selecting for wood properties. Uh, the New Zealand situation is that we have six suppliers of redwood planting stock. Uh, four of them are forestry nurseries, and they are some of the mainstream nurseries. We also have two forest management companies who both have an interest in genetics and access to improve genetics and they're contracting nurseries to grow redwood planting stock for their own planting programs and for sale. These um, six suppliers have production in the range of, of 10,000 to 250,000 trees each year. All of the nurseries are using seed to some extent and after contacting these nurseries recently, I was pleased to find out that none are using New Zealand based seed anymore. Uh, there are well described problems with, uh, with New Zealand derived seed and probably the best example is seed from the Memorial Grove and Rotorua, which is a stand of magnificent redwood. But we believe that most of the trees are brothers and sisters or, or closely related, possibly the original seed came from a single tree that uh, was, was felled for, for cone collection. But anyway, although those trees are, are um, good examples of redwood, their offspring have problems with inbreeding and are less vigorous and uh, there's a belief that there are um, compromises to wood properties as well. Uh, the largest supplier of redwood declinal stock uh, is producing containerized trees derived from tissue culture. Um, the little flask in the photograph is uh, redwood tissue culture trees as they've been transferred from a lab where they're multiplied up to the nursery, which grows them onto um, a plantable size. The selection criteria are growth and form. I mentioned before that the Californian foresters are not interested in wood properties, but uh, the New Zealand growers think that um, with the ability to clone redwoods and bring them into production rapidly, that all traits of interest should be considered in the selection process. And the second trait of interest to the New Zealand foresters uh, which is of no interest to those in California, is epicormic sprout growth. Uh, we, we prune our redwoods in New Zealand. Virtually everyone who's planted redwood is, is intending to prune them, whereas in California they don't. Uh, they have very little in the way of management inputs, and so they don't, uh, they don't see any problem with epicormic sprout production. Now the, the largest supplier of tree redwood planting stock in New Zealand is actually a member of the California Redwood Tree Improvement Program and has access to genetics from that program. And because of the interest in wood properties and epicormic sprout production in New Zealand, uh, the elite trees from the Tree Improvement Cooperative are evaluated in New Zealand for uh, for those um, the um, the foresters in California um, as a recognition to what we're doing in New Zealand collect wood samples from the parent trees which are shipped down to New Zealand for testing and unfortunately with epic 
McCormick sprout production, we have to wait till the trees are pruning age in New Zealand before we can evaluate them um, for epicormic um, sprouting. There is really no, has been no attempt at redwood breeding um, as we think of breeding. The focus is on clonal forestry, which ha has some important differences. We simply go into the forest, uh, pick out trees that are bigger than their peers. Uh, we can take increment cores and have the heartwood tested for durabil natural durability, basic density, um, any of those things. Uh, we have one supplier of redwood planting stock who has established seed orchards in New Zealand, but they are not yet in production. Um, and we have uh, proceed have been working with uh, redwood and attempting unsuccessfully, unfortunately, at this stage, control pollination. So there is uh, there, uh, that is a good strategic approach for tree improvement in New Zealand that is uh, crossing parents with desirable traits and then creating a New Zealand land race from those. Um, but so far that's fairly early stages and again the reliance is on um, is on clonal production and the um, this is the final slide and just illustrates the um, the issue of epicormic sprout production the tree on the left is uh, just a random seedling that was pruned as part of a trial a um, number of years ago um, it does still have a few branches on it, but you'll see that there are, are a whole lot of small branches and epicormic sprouts that have to be removed if, um, if a forester wants to produce clear wood in that butt log. And with redwood, they will grow back. Um, following pruning, uh, some trees that we describe as hairy will even if you clean them up like the stem on the right the next time you see that tree it will have sprouts up and down the stem now the cost of pruning that tree could be as much as as twice the tree on the right and if when the pruners come back in to do the second lift they have to take off a whole lot of sprouts again before they do the second lift then you can you can see that it it, um, it wouldn't take much to uh, to double the cost of pruning operations so we are very interested in, in this trait in New Zealand, and as I previously said, uh, all of the growers in New Zealand are pruning their redwoods. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening.